Hello, welcome to the sixth part of my Common Lisp programming language tutorials. My name is Will, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, since I decided that I'm not the best person at coming up with problems, and especially on the spot, because that's what I usually do on these videos, and I'm not the best person at preparing beforehand, what I decided to do is leech off some work from my professor and use his programming assignments as material for this tutorial. So this is a course in AI, just an introductory course to AI, which uses Common Lisp. I took this course a few semesters ago. This is the assignment for this semester's course. However, seeing as the due date has already passed and apparently grades have already been posted, and no, no harm in, in solving them, even though collaboration is not allowed. So uh, let's get straight to it. <clears throat> what I would do if I'm, if I were you, a watcher or a viewer, who says watcher, a viewer, uh, I would pause and and read the instructions here thoroughly. Seeing as there are a few problems, and I know at least the last one is a bit complicated or convoluted, then uh, we're going to, I'm I'm going to go kind of quickly through them. So, this first one. We need to find out if the first list is a subset of the second one. Now, a subset means that every element of the first list is an element of the second list. So let's get this set up here. So, as I defined, the function needs to be called m subset. As I discussed in a previous video, this is because Common Lisp already has a function called subset. This is actually that professor that I just used as m dash for my. So, <clears throat> anyway. So, we need to find out if every element of the first list is present in the second one. A very simple way to think about this solution is that we're literally going to examine every single element of the first list to see if it's in the second one. So we can do this in, in various ways. If this were uh, in, you know, some other programming language, we would pretty much immediately go to loops. We can do that. Um, and actually, I will show that solution later. For now, we're going to focus on the, we're going to do a recursive solution instead. Because we can use recursion for, for things that we would use loops in other languages for. We're, we're going to be examining all the elements of the list, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at the first one, then the second one, using recursion on the cooter of the list. So, when doing recursive functions, we typically have a special case for when the list is null. And by the way, we are recursing on the first list, L1. And this is because, as stated in the problem, we need to find out if every element of the first list is in the second one. We don't really need to go through the second one uh, just yet. What, what we want to do is just go through every element of the first and examine each one specifically. So, if our list is empty, that means it contains no elements. And the definition of subset is that every element in the first list needs to be in the second one. So, seeing as we have no elements, technically every element is in the second one. So, purely by technicality, the when we have a null list as our first argument, we're going to be returning no. Or, or not nil, we're going to be returning t for true. And that's going to help us out because that's essentially our base case in this recursion. Because if we have if we have at least one element, then what we can do is, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce this macro, which is going to be and. What we need to what we need is for the current element to be in the list, and the second, or or, or all the other elements of this list to be in in the in L2. So our current element is car of L1, and we need to find out if that is in L2. Now common list provides a function called member that actually just tests uh, that tests this specifically. So we're going to go ahead and use that. 
So member is going to test for this object to be present in the list L2. So that solves that one. So now we need to find out for every other element of L1 to be present in L2. So we already have a function that tests for every element of one list to be in another, and that's called M subset. Remember, when, we, we're, when we're, we're building a recursive function, we always need to keep in mind the what the goal of the function is, what the function is being is doing, because we need to find out where it's applicable to call it. In this case, we need to test for the current element to be in in L2, and then we need to find out for every other element, that is, <coughs> every element in the cooter of L1 to be in L2. So what we can do is subset. And actually, car and cooter, these are, these remain essentially for historical purposes. I think I mentioned that in a previous video, but you can also use first and rest. They mean exactly the same, th the same way, uh, the same thing. And I think I, I generally just prefer car and cooter just the the way I've, I've been doing it but you know if it helps your understanding you can think of cooter as rest instead because it, that that one makes most most sense as as rest whereas car I think like cur as in c u r so I think current when I'm doing a cursive case but anyway so oh geez I forgot to write a, con the, a condition for, for this. So we only had those two cases. Either we have an empty list or we have something in the list. So that we can resolve this to an else being t for the condition. So we're going to return for this element to be part of the list and for all the rest of the elements to be part of the list. I'm switch back to cooter. And what the AND special operator is going to do is it's going to examine each of its arguments. And it's not a special operator, it's a, it's a macro. It's going to examine each of the arguments, in this case, member of car1, l2, and this call to subset. And what it's going to do is very simple. It's going to, <clears throat> if, this, if this argument evaluates to false, the entire thing is going to evaluate this false and it's going to stop right there. Otherwise it's going to it's going to look at the next element. And it's going to keep doing that until it runs out of elements. And if they all evalu evaluate it to evaluate it to true, then what we're going to be returning what this is going to evaluate to is true. And we have a special case for and and no elements for which case this means t. This is going to return true. As, a, as an example, we can have and this is going to return true <coughs> because 2 is an even number and it's also a positive number. But if we go ahead and do uh, 3 here, then this is going to be false right here and this is never going to get evaluated and the entire thing is going to result to nil. So that is exactly what we want to use in this case because we need for both the current element and all the other elements to be part of L2 and that ends this function so next function my delete it's going to delete all occurrences of a given atom in a list of any structure so this one's a uh, slightly more complicated because we're gonna have multiple cases and delete the first item is going to be the object, or the atom if you want to call it, and the second one is going to be the list. So, <clears throat> what what happens if the list is empty? Then, oh, that's technically the list for which every every instance of the object is, has been uh, removed. But now we have something in the list. So the quickest thing to check is that something, the object that we have. So 
So in that case, what we can go ahead and do is essentially skip over the object. Because we're, remember, we're not we're not going to when it says deletes, we're not actually going to be modifying the list. What we're going to be doing is constructing a new list using cons and a pen maybe, and we're going to be returning that. Where when we're building recursive function like this, we typically do not actually modify the list. What we do is ret we return a new one for which the operation has, has finished. So what we can essentially do is pretend that that object was never there and we can just return the deletion of the rest of the list. This essentially skips over the object because <clears throat> As I said, it's it's going to it's going to just return the 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 end delete of the rest of the list, not so without taking the current the current element into consideration whatsoever. So 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 if we're, if we're in this case, then this is not the object that we're we're trying to delete. So what we're going to go ahead is include it in our new list by doing by consing it into the m deletion of the rest of the list. So remember we're constructing a new list and we achieve that by using cons. <clears throat> so whenever we encounter an element that is not the one we want to remove, we're going to add it to the to the list we get by deleting all those elements. And uh, take a moment to think about that, maybe draw it out a little bit, so you can see what I mean. So that should cover it. Except for the fact that it says a list of any structure. And if you look at the second example, one of the elements of the main list is actually a sublist. We have the list that contains A and H. So, and you can see that A was removed from that as well. Otherwise, it would be, it would be present here. So we have one other case to to take in, into consideration, which is when the current element is a list. So what we're going to do be doing in this case, it's very similar to a problem I did in uh, last time with tutorial number five. Except I don't I don't think I went into that closely enough or or thoroughly enough. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we have if we have uh, a sublist, we have it right here. What we want to go ahead and do is also remove all occurrences of that object in that sublist. So we're gonna be calling M delete on it to remove all occurrences of that object in that list, that sublist. And we need to we need to essentially combine that together with this call. Or, whoops, because this is this is right here the deletion of that object in the rest of the list. So we need to combine these two together. Now we can. There, I think I, I I discussed the function previously called append which is going to take two lists and it's going to concatenate them together. However, in this case, what we actually want is cons because in this new list that we're constructing, this sublist that does not contain that that object is part of the is part of the list. Therefore, we're we're consing it in. And that should take care of it all. Because now if it's a sublist, we're going to recurse into it. And we also need to recurse on the rest of it, just as we do for the normal case when we do not have a sublist. We we are recursing on the rest of the list. Because otherwise, if we don't have this column, we just say like list right here instead of recursing into it. What we're going to end up with is we're going to stop as soon as we hit a sublist, which is not what we want. So let's restore that. <clears throat>